Product costing is one of the issues with managerial accounting where we're trying to apply a cost to a product, but how do we get that cost? Now, in order to understand that, we need to understand the stages of manufacturing. Now, manufacturing has three stages of production. The three stages are work not started. So essentially, this is just raw material sitting in the back, hadn't even been taken up to begin the process of creating the product. The second stage would be work started but not finished. So we're in that range of we've started it, we just haven't got it 100% complete yet. And the last one is finished work. And more specifically, if you think about it, this is finished work that hasn't been sold yet because we're still talking about inventory. Now, each of these three have their own inventory account in the general ledger. Now, if we're looking at this from the perspective of a retail company, then they're not going to have these. But we're looking at specifically from a manufacturing business. So the three uh, inventory accounts that are associated with those three stages, well, the work not started would be called raw material inventory. This is that raw material that's sitting in the back of the warehouse that hasn't even been brought up yet. The stuff that's in raw material inventory, if you think about it from a percentage scale, this is 0% complete. It hasn't even been started yet. The second one is what we call work in process. This is the stuff where the raw material has been brought in. We're actually starting to put labor to it. We're actually starting to create it. Again, from a percentage standpoint, this would be 1% to 99%. Anywhere in that range would fall into work in process because it's been started. It just hasn't been finished yet. And then the third one is the finished goods inventory. This is the 100% but not sold category. We finished it and it's sitting in our showroom. It just hasn't been sold yet. So if you're looking at it from an income statement perspective, if we're looking at it from a merchandising business, this is probably what you would see. Assets, cash, and inventory. From a manufacturing business, this is what you'd see. In the inventory, we would actually break it down into those categories. Raw materials, work in process, and finished goods all having their own account balance. Now, there are three inventory accounts that work in particular. These three um, inventory accounts work in a particular manner. They all work together. We're talking about the cost flow from one to the next, to the next, to the next. So if you want to look at it from an, uh, an illustration format, take a look at this. We start with raw materials. That's where we bring in all the materials that we're going to use at some point in time. Now, the only way we can increase this balance is if we add more purchases to it. So into raw materials, we're going to add purchases. Now, out of raw materials comes materials that goes into work and process the moment we start working on the product. Okay. Now, raw materials encompasses both indirect material and direct material. Now, the direct material out of raw materials inventory goes directly into work and process. That's the easy one. The indirect material, however, doesn't go directly into work and process. It goes into manufacturing overhead. Okay, Manufacturing overhead, again, is, is anything that goes into the production of it that is not direct material, direct labor. Okay, Also, in order to create the product, we also have to have labor. This stuff is not just going to create itself. So we're going to have to add labor in some capacity. Well, labor, oh, excuse me, this section right here is what we call direct materials used, or sometimes you're going to hear it called requisitioned. Now, the labor side, we're going to have to add. Now, we have to split up labor in two ways because we have direct labor, which, again, goes directly into the working process. And then we also have indirect labor, which also goes into manufacturing overhead. So, so far right now into the working process, we have direct material and we have direct labor. We also need to add that third component of product cost, which is the manufacturing overhead. So we'll add that into working process. So in the working process, that 1% to 99%, we're going to add those three components, direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, to complete the product. Once we complete it, that cost moves out of working process into finished goods inventory. The cost that moves out of that is what we refer to as cost of goods manufactured. Okay. And then once we actually sell it, then it's not our inventory anymore. We take it out of our finished goods inventory and we turn, put it into the cost of goods sold account. And the cost that moves from finished goods inventory goes into the cost of goods sold, uh, cost of goods sold account through what we call the ca calculation of cost of goods sold. Real creative with the name here. Now, each of these have their own equations. So looking at it from the inventory account, so raw materials inventory, work and process inventory, and finished goods inventory, the account that we would use to uh, calculate this information is uh, as follows. We're going to start with the beginning balance, what we started the period with, plus any additions, any additional costs that we put into that balance during the period. Then we're going to take out the cost that we removed during that period, and what's left is going to be our ending balance. Now, if we're looking at the cost calculations, which are the arrows that goes in between these, 
they have their own uh, equation. All right, let's, let's go through these in, uh, individually. So raw materials inventory, if you're going to look at raw materials inventory, if you're trying to find that balance, you're going to start with beginning raw materials plus the raw materials purchased because that's the arrow that's going into it minus the cost removed during the period, which is going to be our raw materials used. So both uh, uh, indirect and direct material. And that's going to give me my RMI. If I'm looking at it from the work in process perspective, then I'm going to start with my beginning work in process plus any of the arrows that go into the work in process, which in work in process, we have three arrows. So we're going to add in the direct material, the direct labor, and the manufacturing overhead minus uh, what we use, which is the arrow going out of work in process, which is the cost of goods manufactured. That's going to give us our ending uh, work in process. And then finally, FGI does the same thing. We're going to start with FGI, beginning FGI, plus the arrow going into FGI, which is our cost of goods manufactured, minus the arrow going out, which is cost of goods sold. And that gives us our ending FGI. Now, let's look at the cost uh, sections. So direct materials used, cost of goods manufactured, cost of goods sold. These are our cost accounts. These are the costs that we're going to have to calculate. So the equation for this would be whatever the beginning balance is, plus the cost added during the period, minus the ending balance, gives us our cost removed during the period. Now, direct material is a little bit different because direct material is direct. We know it's easily traceable, so we know how much that is. We don't have to actually calculate that one. It's just we're looking for the direct materials requisition. But if we're looking at it from a cost of goods manufactured standpoint, then it's going to look like this. We're going to start with the beginning whip, or work in process, plus the arrows, so direct material, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, minus the ending balance of whip, or work in process, and that gives us our cost of goods manufactured. That's how we calculate the cost of goods manufactured. For cost of goods sold, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do beginning FGI, or finished goods inventory, plus the arrow going into FGI, which is your cost of goods manufactured, minus your ending finished goods inventory, and that's going to give you your cost of goods sold.